Welcome to the Globus Office Hours mini tutorial on Globus Connect Personal. Globus Connect Personal, or GCP for short, turns your desktop, laptop, or other personal computer into a Globus endpoint. With Globus Connect Personal, you can share and transfer files to or from a desktop computer or laptop, even if it's behind a firewall. Globus Connect Personal is available for all major operating systems and installs and authenticates to your Globus account quickly and easily. The first thing we'll cover here is, of course, the installation of Globus Connect Personal. Seasoned Globus users may have noticed that the installation process has changed recently. While we made that change for ease of installation, we know that there are a few of you that have workflows that require the traditional installation method with a setup key. We'll cover both here as well as show you how to delete your GCP installation and tweak some of the GCP settings. After installation, we'll do a quick transfer just to prove our GCP installation is working. And we'll also talk about the differences between downloads and transfers. Since we've added the ability for subscriber endpoints to allow for HTTPS access to various files, there's been a little confusion as to what that little cloud icon with the arrow coming from it does in the web app. Lastly, we'll talk about the subscription feature Globus Plus and how it can be used to do GCP to GCP transfers and share data right from your GCP endpoint. So let's do a couple of install examples. First, without the setup key, and then with the setup key. I'll be doing the install under Mac OS, and I'll refer you to our how-to pages for the accompanying step-by-step -step documentation I'll largely be following, as well as the documentation for other operating systems, and that's listed here on this slide. As I mentioned before, Globus Connect Personal turns your desktop, laptop, or other personal computer into a Globus endpoint. And it works, even if your computer is behind a firewall. There are, however, some outbound TCP and UDP ports that need to be open in your firewall. The accompanying doc on our how-to pages details that, and that's also listed here on this slide. After logging into the Globus web application, click on the Endpoints menu on the left-hand side, and then click on Create a Personal Endpoint in the upper right-hand corner. If you don't already have the application, click on Download Globus Connect Personal, if you do already have the application and aren't 100% sure that you have the latest version, it isn't a bad idea to do this regardless. In my case, with Mac OS, the application image will be put in the Downloads folder. So I'll go ahead and double click on this application image. I'll then be directed to transfer that downloaded app to the Applications folder. Now that the application is installed, I could put a link to it in my toolbar or simply run it from the Applications folder with a double click. This is where the endpoint gets set up. Click the Login button and the application will redirect you to the Web App Consents page. Here, GCP is asking the Globus Authentication System to approve the association of the identities that make up your Globus account with the Globus Connect personal application. You can provide a label, so if you need to manage those consents in the future, you know which consent is associated with Globus Connect Personal. In fact, Globus Connect Personal or GCP is a fine text choice for this. Provide that label and click the Allow button. The GCP application will now ask for the final details to set up your endpoint. If you have multiple linked identities in Globus, you may pick the particular identity to associate with your endpoint. Give your GCP endpoint a unique name. I stress unique name. If you name your endpoint GCP or something similarly generic, depending upon how you search for it, you may have a difficult time finding it. You can also add a description of your endpoint. This will aid when searching for your endpoint. If your institution has a high assurance subscription and you are using this endpoint for sensitive data, you may check the high assurance box. If that is indeed the case, there are additional steps you and the managers of your subscription must take, which are detailed here. For most, that's likely not to be the case, so we'll leave that box unchecked. Click the Save button, and that's it. Your endpoint's now up and running. Exit the setup program. On Mac OS, you'll see the application running in the taskbar. The Preferences menu allows you to configure GCP to suit your use. For instance, the Access tab 
allows you to tie your GCP installation to a particular directory. The default installation is the user's home directory, but with a few clicks, that can be changed to a more specific and controlled area of your local file system. Note here the shareable checkbox. We'll talk about that more when we talk about Globus Plus. One thing to point out, in the case of GCP, the terms endpoint and collection are used rather interchangeably. Unlike Globus Connect Server, Globus Connect personal endpoints serve a single collection, hence the one-to-one -one correspondence with these terms. So let's see if we can access that endpoint. Go to the File Manager in the Globus Web App, and under the Endpoints menu on the left-hand side of the Web App, if you click on Administered by You, you'll see all the endpoints administered by you, including that GCP endpoint that we just set up right here. From the File Manager menu, you can simply search on the name of that collection in the Collection text box of the File Manager menu. And you can see here why a unique name for your endpoint is important. So here we are, we're accessing that endpoint, and here's that directory that I uh, tied this endpoint down to in the Preferences menu. So let's do a test transfer here, and on the Globus Tutorial Endpoint 1 Share Go Data directory, there are several files. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of them and hit Start to initiate the transfer. You'll see the transfer request is submitted, uh, and away it goes. And since these are very small files, I'm gonna assume that that gets there pretty quickly. And indeed, if I do a refresh here, there's those three files that show up on my endpoint and in the local file system of my laptop. Bringing up a file browser on my laptop, I can see that's indeed the case. Here's that Globus endpoint directory, and there are the three files that I transferred. So you can quit the application via the taskbar. Now there's no running endpoint associated with the file system on your laptop or your workstation. If you've done this or rebooted your machine, simply running the application again will restart your last GCP endpoint instance. We get many support tickets from people unable to find their GCP endpoint that worked fine yesterday, only to find out that the GCP application is simply no longer running. Now we'll demonstrate how to do a GCP install using the install key. This may be important if you want to install GCP as a particular identity if you are working with multiple Globus accounts in multiple browser sessions. I myself often do this when doing sharing demos. I may want to create a share on an institutional endpoint accessed by my institutional Globus account and share it with a personal identity. I then want to create a GCP endpoint for that personal identity to prove that I can access the institutional file system and transfer the file that was shared. First, and this is actually quite important, we'll show you how to delete an instance of Globus Connect Personal. Don't just delete the application files and assume Globus Connect Personal is no longer running, but follow the instructions for your particular operating system in the links I gave earlier off of our how-to page. In the case of Mac OS, in the application running in the toolbar, the Preferences menu here, Delete Globus Connect Personal and Exit, you'll also have to confirm that action. It's also good practice to delete that endpoint in the web app as well. The installation process with the install key is similar to what we did previously, but obviously I first need that install key. For this particular demonstration, I'm going to use a different browser window, in fact, a different browser altogether. I'm logged into Globus with a different account than I used in the previous demo. In this case, a personal identity that I use in sharing demonstrations. Using the URL listed in the last slide we saw, I can generate an installation key that will allow GCP to be installed under the ownership of the particular identity that we've used to log into this particular web app session. This is also where you name your endpoint. Generate the setup key, and don't forget to copy that to the clipboard so you can use it later. In this case, I'm not going to download the application because I know there's a fresh copy of it in the applications directory of my laptop. I double click on that application and start the installation process just like the first time we ran through this. But instead of clicking the login button, 
I click the Advanced Options menu. I click I have a setup key, and I paste in the key that we had just generated and hit Submit. That's it. Globus Connect Personal is up and running just like before. You'll also have to acknowledge the installation and exit the setup. And going to the Endpoints menu, administered by UTAB, we can see that that is indeed the case, and there's the endpoint that we just installed. One thing I wanted to clear up is the distinction between file download and file transfer. We've seen more than one support ticket recently with that underlying theme, which leads me to believe it warrants additional clarification. When Globus Connect Server version 5 came out, it allowed Globus subscribers the ability to instantiate an endpoint that could not only serve the Globus transfer service, but also allow direct download of data with HTTPS. The use case here is for situations where the recipient can't or won't install Globus Connect Personal on their local workstation to receive a file. This is the cloud with the arrow coming from it icon in the Globus Web App Hamburger Menu toolbar. If that icon is blue, in the case of this particular endpoint, it means that HTTPS downloads have been enabled for this particular file. If you have the proper credentials to access the file, essentially if it has been shared with you or your identity, you will be able to add, download this file directly from within the web app to your local file system. No need for a local Globus Connect personal install. However, it uses HTTPS as the transfer protocol, so you don't get all the Globus goodness like the speed of grid FTP, the fire and forget nature of transfers managed by the Globus service, and email delivery notifications, just to name a few. For small files, it's fine, but for larger file transfers that must live through unstable network connections or spurious endpoint availability, it would be a poor choice. If this icon is grayed out, it doesn't mean you cannot transfer the file to your own endpoint, such as a GCP endpoint. It simply means that HTTPS access to the file is not enabled. For a traditional transfer operation from endpoint to endpoint, use the Start button below the file listing of the collection. Lastly, let's talk about Globus Plus, another Globus subscription-only feature. Remember the Share Data checkbox in the GCP Application Preferences Access menu I referred to earlier? You can enable this regardless of what I'm about to say, but in order for it to actually work, you need one of two things. If you want to share data from your Globus Connect personal endpoint or do GCP to GCP transfers, either your GCP endpoint needs to be managed under a subscription or your identity as the owner of this endpoint needs to be a member of a Globus Plus group. A Globus Plus group is a group like any other where you can discover it and request membership via our web app under the Groups menu, provided the group has been set up for you to do so. But it is a special group in that once you've been made a member, you will be able to share from the Globus Connect personal endpoints that you are the owner and administrator of. Not all subscribers have chosen to enable Globus Plus groups. I suggest you search for your institution in the Groups menu to see if there is a Globus Plus group set up should you be so interested. More information on Globus Plus can be found in the subscription section of our FAQ site.